The natural wonders you will find in every corner of Iceland make it one of the most incredible countries to explore on a summer road trip. I was in love with the place before I ever stepped foot in the country. And even though I went in with high expectations, everything that we experienced completely blew my mind. There are the well-known waterfalls, glaciers, diamond beaches and geothermal baths, but it's what you find outside of these main sites that make Iceland such a truly remarkable country. Our two favourite places were just on the side of the road and you'll never find them marked on a map. And this is what makes an Iceland road trip so special. You never know what you're going to find around every corner. This is the most exciting video I've ever made and I just can't wait to share with you everything from our epic Iceland road trip adventure. After picking up what would be our home for the next six nights, our very first stop is the famous Blue Lagoon. This is an easy 20 minute drive from the airport. This is a surprisingly expensive activity with even the most basic packages costing you just under 100 US dollars. But you can go much higher than this at peak times of the day depending on what inclusions you go for. We booked the very first time slot of the day so we had the pools almost to ourselves for the first half an hour. As beautiful as these pictures are, there's an inescapable smell of sulphur that is in the air everywhere you go. But you'll get used to this quickly and you can enjoy your steamy surroundings. All packages include at least a drink from the swim up bar and a mud mask. Didn't do much for my skin personally, but Arne seemed to like it. The Blue Lagoon is a fun way to introduce yourself to Iceland, but we knew that better things lay ahead, so we were keen to hit the road and start making our way around the Golden Circle. After 90 minutes on the road, we arrived at the small but beautiful Porifus waterfall. This is a slight detour from the typical Golden Circle route, and as a result, we had the place almost to ourselves. If you were game enough to navigate this steep wall to get into the valley floor, you can get right up close to the front of the waterfall. Or you could just enjoy the view from the car park, which is also very nice. Once back on the road, it's only 18 kilometers to Thingvalir National Park. This is the only place in the world where you can physically stand between two continental plates. There's also a diving activity where you can swim down between them. If you would prefer not to get wet, there's a number of easy walking pathways that will take you up to some viewing platforms that offer great views over the lake. We had time for just one more stop during the day, and that is to the geothermal field of geysers. Here you can observe these incredible periodic eruptions of boiling hot water from deep under the Earth's surface. You can really feel that heat of the water, so make sure you're not standing downwind when that water gets blown up into the sky. So after a big first day, we pulled into a caravan park right next door to the geothermal field to settle in for the night. And yes, this is night time. If you come to Iceland in summer, bring an eye mask. <laughs> So a quick day one recap, we've traveled almost 190 kilometers and we have barely scratched the surface for what Iceland has to offer. We're starting day two with a short drive to one of the most epic waterfalls you will ever see. And while we're on the road, please take a moment to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so, so you don't miss out on any of our future epic road trips. Any words used to describe this place simply won't do it justice. The sheer scale of it and the roar of that water pouring over the front of the waterfall is something you just need to experience for yourself. It's incredible from a distance, but you can also get right up close. But just know you are going to get wet. And the way down there can be a little bit treacherous. This is starting to look like an easier way than this shit. Needless to say, a lot of people are laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> One final highlight before we hit the road again was we got our first glimpse of a glacier way off in the distance. Our final stop of the official Golden Circle route was Kerrid Crater. The lake in the centre is an unusual blue colour and you're surrounded by red rock with greenery draped around it. You have remarkable freedom when you're inside the complex to explore either on top of the ridges or down at water level. The shape of the crater looks quite different depending on where you're standing, what elevation and the angle you're looking back down at the lake. As we leave the Golden Circle, we head towards a small town of Selfos, where you could either take a right and head back to Reykjavik, 
or turn left and continue down the ring road. And while the weather didn't look like much at this point in time, we were excited to be headed towards that plateau you can see off in the distance. This is the central point where so many of the waterfalls and glaciers flow that characterise this part of Iceland. And we were going to visit two very special places before the day was done. The first was Seljulandfoss. This amazing waterfall is visible from a long way away when you're approaching by road. And it's even more impressive the closer you get. There's a pathway that allows you to walk all the way behind the falls and come out the other side. It does get very wet and cold, but it's still an incredible place to be standing. Speaking of places that look incredible on approach, Skogafoss is kind of hidden. You won't see it from the street until you come around a mountain and this is the view that you're faced with. Now just to the bottom right hand corner of the waterfalls is another camping ground and that's where we're going to be setting up for tonight. But first, we're going to get a good look at this thing. To say that I was excited and completely blown away would be an understatement. Check this thing in. What an absolute monster. It's also very cold and very wet. Absolutely stunning, stunning surroundings. And you wouldn't believe it's about 9 o'clock at night, 9.30. The sun has just gone down over the mountain. The sun doesn't go down for another two hours. So if you see right at the top of that hill, you can see that little dot, that's a person. We're about to go up there. So despite the late hour, we began the climb up. We were also in a race against this cloud, which threatened to block the view completely once we reached the platform at the top. But lucky for us, all we had to look through was the mist of the water filtering up from the face of the waterfall. You also had a great view all the way out to sea, with nothing in the way except big, open, lush green fields. And one extra thing to quickly point out from this angle, this section here on the left of the public car park, that's a paid camping ground, and this is where we plan on spending the night, hopefully with an uninterrupted view of the waterfall. Skogafoss is also the start of the waterfall way hike, if you see those two fellas walking off into the distance, they're at the start of a 10 mile round trip where you can discover up to 25 more waterfalls. I would love to go back and do this one day. By this time, it was well after 10 p.m. at night and it had been such a massive day, we needed to get some sleep. I woke up at about 4.30 in the morning to go to the bathroom. It was this bright. It's now 7.30, still this bright. Died. <laughs> so as much as I was protesting the light, if you're the sort of person where white noise helps you sleep, you couldn't pick a better spot than where we were. It's a pretty incredible thing to wake up to no matter what else is happening around you. We were back on the road quickly with another massive day ahead of us. First we had to rush to the town of Vic because we were booked in for an ice caving tour first thing in the morning but we got there with just enough time to grab a coffee and go down to check out Vic's iconic black beach. But it wasn't long until we were in a big monster truck like vehicle with our tour guides from Extreme Iceland who were taking us off road and towards a massive glacier for us to climb and search for a big ice cave. The climb into the glacier was not that difficult and once you get over the initial ridge, you go into a huge bowl of dark ice the shape of which is constantly changing, so everyone's experience will be completely different. The cave itself was much bigger than I expected, but it wasn't very long, probably a good thing. And when we came out the other side, we were met with this big icy archway that overlooked the valley we had just driven through before. Once back on the road from Vic, it was not long until we were driving through the Eldrin lava field. It covers over 500 square kilometers and is the result of a massive eruption that took place over 140 years ago, which at the time was a massive event that affected not only Iceland, but parts of Europe as well. It is not the most visually appealing thing on screen, but it's the scale of the impact and the devastation that you could see across the landscape in every direction as far as the eye can see that makes this such an eye-opening place to visit. Up next, we have one of the most exciting stops on our whole trip, the canyon called Fiata Glufa. Try saying that 10 times fast. It takes about an hour to walk from the car park along the edge of the canyon to where the viewing platforms are. 
and I spent most of that hour in complete disbelief at what I was looking at. It almost looks like a place that belongs on another planet. Words just can't describe what an incredible place this is, and standing on that viewing platform looking straight down the canyon, it gave me chills. Our next intended stop was the Sistra Foss waterfall, but if you recall at the very start of this video, I mentioned two of our favourite places that were just on the side of the road. Both of these were on the way to Sistra Foss, but I can't tell you exactly where they are, because I don't know. This understated and pleasant stream of water was just on the side of the road. We stopped to have a look, and it wasn't long before Arne whispered to me that this was her favourite place in Iceland so far. If you know what it's called, please let us know in the comments. I'd love to be able to find it again. Not much further up the road was my favourite moment in Iceland. And I don't think it's something I'll ever be able to find again, because it was a combination of the cloud and the landscape that made it such a special moment. We simply pulled off the main road, went down this flat gravel section, and sat here having lunch with this amazing backdrop with no one around. After everything we'd experienced that day, finally arriving at Sistra Foss, well, it was nice, but it was very hard to compete. One of the coolest thing about Iceland is because a lot of the landscape is so flat and open, you can often see these big landmarks approaching in the distance from a really long way away. This is the Skedara Jokic. I had to practice that one. This is what's known as an outlet glacier that runs off the largest ice cap in Iceland. The way the ice spews around the mountain is an incredible sight. As we got closer, we realised there was a road that would take us all the way into the lip of the glacier. Now, in our two-wheel drive camper van, we had no business being on this road. It was incredibly bumpy and we lost a lot of time because we could only go at a snail's pace as we made our way down this road. But, once we got there, it was absolutely worth it. And by this time, once again, we had run out of day. So we found the closest camping ground we could to settle in for the night. And while we were both exhausted, we knew that we had had one of the most incredible days you could ever have traveling. But there was another huge highlight waiting for us the very next day. On day four, we're heading further east to the icy playground of the Diamond Beach. This is a world famous destination and one of the big draws that gets people to Iceland in the first place. What I didn't know ahead of time is that the Jakulsjaron Glacier Lagoon is right next door and is in fact the source of all of the ice diamonds that end up on Diamond Beach. We decided to start our day at the Glacier Lagoon and took the amphibious boat tour out onto the water. This is the easiest option to get up close to those icebergs and the glacier in the background. We did not book in advance and were unable to get on the Zodiac boat tour or the kayak tour. The kayaks especially look like a lot of fun because you can get so close to the icebergs and see things that you just can't from the boat. Eventually, each of these chunks of ice make their way through a narrow channel and out to sea. The tide then washes them back onto the beach. Eventually they break up and that's what scatters these icy diamonds all the way along the black sand. It really is a fun place and you can get very creative with the kind of photos you can take depending on the shape of the ice that you come across. But of course, you need to be careful of those waves. If you get caught unawares, you're going to have wet and very cold feet. At this point, we had a very difficult decision to make. Do we keep heading east towards the town of Hoffen and beyond, or do we turn back and give ourselves the chance to see the Snofeljakur National Park before we finished our trip? For me, this was an easy decision, because seeing Kirk Jafelfoss was right at the top of my list for things to do in Iceland. So we hopped in the van and we started the 450 kilometer drive to where we would spend the night. Is it strange to feel nostalgic about the things you did yesterday or the day before? When you do a drive like this all in one go, it was a flood of emotions and great memories, 
as we drove past the amazing glaciers, waterfalls, through the lava field, and alongside that amazing greenery that we've marvelled at all week long. Eventually reaching the Borgana's camping ground on the other side of the country, just in time for that midnight sun. It was another massive day and we learnt something really important, and that is we have to come back as soon as we can so we can go further down that ring road and see everything else on the eastern and northern side of the country that we're going to miss out on on this trip. We had one big day left and I can promise you it was worth driving halfway around the country for. And we are exhausted. <laughs> Reason being, our four day south coast itinerary, no, our five day south coast itinerary had to be jammed into four days because we realised that one of the main things we wanted to see in our five and a half slash six day Iceland trip was on the opposite side of the country. So we've come this far to go to the Snaefels Jokul National Park. Snaefels Jokul. <laughs> One day left to do this. We made it. We're ready. It's about an hour and a half drive that way. Are you excited? Yes. Do you have anything to add? Uh, no? Do you want to try and pronounce this? Snaefels Jokul. Snaefels Jokul. Sounds French. So even though we had set a cracking pace this week, we were determined to see everything that the peninsula had to offer. And after a fairly uneventful 90 minute drive, we were met with this big open plain with those beautiful mountains surrounding it. Now onto our first planned stop, which is the Rafelsta Gorge. From the outside, the rocks had a very similar color to the well-known Fiara Glufa Canyon, which we had marveled at just two days ago. It's a very narrow crack in this big rock face that you're able to slip inside and walk deep into the side of the mountain. You have to navigate a stream of water, so there's a pretty good chance you're gonna get wet at some point. At the other end of that big open valley we saw earlier was a road that headed straight up the mountain. So we decided to go up there to see how far we could make it. The answer was not very far but the views were at least worth trying. On this stretch of the drive, we got some great views of Snaefeljökull, which is the glacier-capped volcano at the center of the peninsula. And you can stop pretty much anywhere to get some great photos. Next, we headed to the rocky cliffs of Londranga, otherwise known as the Rocky Castle, which is much easier to say. These rocky shards of black rock leap out of the cliff face to create a pretty special stretch of coastline. And not far away is the black sand beach of Jupalandusur. We spent less time here than I did practicing how to say the name. So if you're short on time, feel free to skip this one. Moving on to the Saxhole Crater. Standing on top of this extinct volcano is quite possibly the windiest spot in the entire country. The views are amazing and I won't subject you to having to listen to what I'm trying to say here because you won't hear a damn thing with that wind. And in my attempts to completely exaggerate the wind for the camera, I did manage to fall over. That part was not on purpose. Our next stop was the glorious Kirchjefellfoss. But on the way there, we had one of the most magnificent coastal drives that I've ever done. It was about 45 minutes of pure pleasure, with the landscape showing something new and different around every corner but I was just counting down until that big moment when I got to see Kirchjefellfoss for the first time. I knew we were getting close. Now I get goosebumps looking at this footage over again. So I'm gonna be quiet for a moment and let the pictures do the talking. It's a beautiful place. Unfortunately, the brutal wind had followed us to this point, so you can't hear anything I'm saying here either, but hopefully my body language and excitement really shines through. I was so excited to be there, and I left a very happy man. And with that, it was time to head back in the direction of Reykjavik. And while we had jammed so much into the five days, we cannot wait to return to Iceland so we can see more of what this beautiful country has to offer. So if you liked this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so we can keep you updated. And if you're considering a trip to one of the Nordic countries, also check out our Norway road trip. 